India's most futuristic military project is also its least known. For obvious reasons, it remains under a cloak of secrecy. But this one is also very special. It was 10 years ago that the existence of this project was first revealed right here on Life Fist. In the months that followed, it became the most talked about project, a story filled with intrigue and mystery. The justifiable question was, how was India planning to develop not just an unmanned combat aircraft, but a stealth type when it was still struggling to build mainstream manned fighter jets? There are many other questions. Some of them have answers. I'm Shiv Arur and you're on Life Fist. Sit back and allow us to take you through the saga of a project now known as Ghatak. Let's start right at the beginning. It was on the 26th of May 2010 that India's stealth unmanned aircraft project was first revealed to the public in this Life Fist report. At the time it was called the Aura, short for Autonomous Unmanned Research Vehicle. With internal research funds and the backing of the Indian Air Force, Project Aura began with the aim to develop an IUSA or Indian Unmanned Strike Aircraft as a tactical unmanned stealth aircraft built largely with composites and capable of delivering laser-guided strike weapons. In June 2010, Life Fist reported the first visual representations of the Aura as used in project definition presentations by the Defence Research and Development Organisation. These were understandably non-technical, mostly just for representative purposes as you can see, but they did provide a confirmation that the Aura was moving forward as a stealthy flying wing design. Things were still extremely secretive at this time and the DRDO was being careful even in its internal communications and slides. As you can see from this slide, the Aeronautical Development Establishment, a lab under the DRDO, described the Aura as a self-defending high-speed reconnaissance UAV with a weapon firing capability which seems pretty old-fashioned now, a typically meandering way of describing the obvious. Another internal slide from June 2010 depicted what the DRDO described as a 2020 unmanned network-centric battlefield. Well, it's 2020 now, and the only unmanned stealth aircraft deployed in combat theatres is the Lockheed Martin Sentinel, or the Beast of Kandahar, though it isn't known to be a weaponized unmanned platform. So coming back to the Indian aura, 10 years ago there was a lot of support, but there were a lot of skeptics too in the Indian Air Force. But overall it was decided that India had no choice but to make a start in these futuristic stealth and pilotless aircraft technologies that no country would ever really share with India. But for the DRDO to muster the backing it needed for this project, it was also no longer feasible to remain under this huge cloak of total secrecy. In November 2010, six months after the Aura program was first revealed on Life Fist, India's DRDO acknowledged the existence of the project for the first time ever. In 2011, this image popped up once again providing some tantalizing cues on the Aura's shape, but nothing even remotely substantive. Two years later, Life Fist revealed the first official impressions of the Aura. These were from a keynote presentation that the then DRDO chief, Dr. Vijay Saraswat, made in Sweden at the Aerospace Forum. At this stage, still very much on the drawing board, things were officially taking shape, with clarity on how the Aura was being envisioned. 3D images provided the first look at the insides of the Aura, revealing a serpentine air intake and an internal weapons bay sporting laser-guided munitions. These images seemed to match unofficial artwork that Life Fist had commissioned from artist and technologist Anurag Rana. Not that there was much room for innovation in shape, especially for a start-from-scratch project, but it was clear that the Aura was comparable, at least visibly, at least on the face of it, to the French Neuron. In 2012, scientists were working on the assumption that the Indian Kaveri jet engine, being developed by a sister laboratory, would be successfully modified to power the aura. This was even stated in Parliament at the time by then Defence Minister A.K. Antony. 
The same year, 2012, as part of an annual awards ceremony, a scientist of the Aeronautical Development Agency received the Young Scientist's Award for his quote-unquote valuable contribution in design of a controllable flying wing UCAV configuration for the Kaveri engine. Hugely ambitious milestones began to leak from the project, including a reported claim that the Aura would fly by 2015, though these quickly disappeared in the face of internal reality checks. 2015 happened to be a milestone year. The Aura project was officially redesignated as Ghatak and became a national project. Government funding began to flow in by 2017 and an administered structure for completion was put in place. While the Aeronautical Development Agency is the lead agency on the program, the frontline research and development was and is being front-footed by two academic institutions, IIT Bombay and IIT Kanpur. Since 2013, low-speed experimental studies had been carried out on the Ghatak serpentine engine intakes by a team at IIT Bombay. This team has been made a kind of mini skunk works with very few limits on resources and access to government facilities. Two specialized research teams at IIT Kanpur were roped in in 2015 for wind tunnel testing of a low radar cross-section engine intake. In November 2015, a team from IIT Kanpur was brought on board to conduct and study the autonomous flight of a low observable aircraft configuration with a ducted fan for multiple flight modes. Now do remember, there are or were several stealth flying wing unmanned concept programs out there, including the Dassault Saab Neuron, the Boeing Phantom Ray, the BAE Systems Tyrannus, the Mikoyan Scat, and most recently, the Sukhoi Okhotnik. And over the last six years, India has been approached by several of these companies saying they'd be willing to assist the Ghatak program in a possible variety of ways, either as offsets or a commercial consultancy arrangement of some kind. The Indian government did, however, take the considered decision that while certain systems on the Ghatak would probably need foreign help, the stealth technologies would necessarily need to be entirely in-house and would be limited to academic institutions and private industry in-country. The fundamental technologies on the Ghatak are shared with another major aircraft project, the fifth generation Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft or AMCA. Many of the stealth and low observable techniques will be common between the two and are therefore shared. The Ghatak though is an exponentially greater challenge since it involves unmanned autonomous flight far from its human controllers, remote target acquisition, satellite communications and command control at long ranges. Don't forget crucial data links to bring all of these together credibly and in a fail-safe manner. Many of these technologies are as complex and challenging as stealth itself and every bit as crucial. Details of where India is with these technologies is not clear just yet, at least in terms of the Ghatak project. In 2017, Lifeist reported how a metal full-scale model of the Ghatak was under fabrication by a private firm in Bengaluru in coordination with the Aeronautical Development Agency. The full-scale model has been built and is being used to gauge detection range and dry radar cross-section, that is, prior to the application of in-development advanced low observability radar cross-section reduction features and or special coatings. The DRDO and Dassault Aviation, suppliers of the Rafale jets, are also in detailed discussions on the utilization of a part of Dassault's offset commitments on the Rafale deal in order to somehow bring in advanced technologies and software, perhaps from the Neuron program, to the Ghatak project and help speed things up till full-scale engineering and design. French and Indian teams have met several times over the last few years on this particular issue. But the level of French involvement in terms of offsets or otherwise in the Ghatak project again remains unclear. The most recent development from the program was in 2018 when it was revealed that a miniaturized flying technology demonstrator called SWIFT, short for Stealth Wing Flying Test Bed, was under construction and would begin flying using a Russian NPO Saturn engine. 
As we recently scooped here on Life Fist, India's AMCA fifth generation fighter program is all set to be a historic public private corporate program led in all likelihood by private sector defense giant Larson and Tubro. Given the technological commonalities at play, it remains unclear if the Ghatak could see a similar public private structure to oversee its advanced design, engineering, and testing phase. As threats around India abound, especially in 2020, a year when the aura was envisioned to be in flight, it is clear that the proposed Ghatak unmanned weapons platform is a necessary effort of national future importance. But where the Ghatak goes from here, count on us to be the first to tell you. If you've been enjoying Life Fist videos, please do consider sharing, subscribing and clicking on the bell icon to receive reminders when new stuff goes up right here.